Today we have another story for you. This story is about a Pokemon Go player playing by themselves one night. The name of this story is Never Play Pokemon Go Alone by Lily Giggles. I never thought much about the warnings surrounding Pokemon Go. It was just a game, right? A way to get outside, enjoy the night air, and catch virtual creatures. But that all changed one frightful night when I decided to venture out into the park alone. It was a Friday, and the moon hung high in the sky, casting an eerie glow over the empty streets as I drove. The park was usually bustling with families during the day, but at night, it transformed into a desolate landscape. Shadows stretched long and deep. I parked my car, the engine's hum fading into the silence, and I stepped out, phone in hand, ready to hunt for Pokemon. As I wandered deeper into the park, the familiar sounds of chirping crickets and rustling leaves surrounded me. I was focused on my screen, tapping away to catch the rare Pokemon that had just appeared nearby. But then I heard it, a faint rustle behind me. I turned, but there was nothing there, just the trees swaying gently in the night breeze. I shrugged it off, convincing myself it was just my imagination. But as I continued to play, the feeling of being watched crept back in. I glanced around. thought I saw a figure standing at the edge of the park, partially hidden in the shadows. My heart began to race. But I told myself it was just another player, maybe someone else out there late like me. I couldn't be the only one. The next few nights were a blur of late night Pokemon hunting. Each time I returned to the park, I felt the same unsettling presence. I would hear whispers carried by the wind, and sometimes I could swear I saw movement out of the corner of my eye. It was just a fleeting shadow, but it left me on edge. But I always convinced myself it was just my imagination, being alone in a park at night. Then one night, it happened. I was engrossed in my game when I heard a, a loud crash from nearby bushes. I jumped, my heart pounding in my chest. I turned to see a figure darting away, disappearing into the darkness. Panic surged through me, and I bolted to my car, adrenaline feeling my escape. For days, I avoided the park. I had convinced myself maybe it wasn't my imagination, and that fear lingered. I tried to convince myself it was in my head, but then what was that figure? A week later, I decided to put it all behind me and return to the park. The park was quiet and I felt a strange sense of relief. Maybe I had overreacted. Maybe the figure was just a trick of the light, a figment of my imagination. I parked my car, took a deep breath, and stepped out into the night air once more. As I walked through the park, the familiar sounds of nature surrounded me, but the air felt thick with tension. It was just my nerves, right? I pulled out my phone, eager to catch some Pokemon, and distract myself from the creeping unease and deepening darkness. I wandered deeper into the park, the glow of my screen illuminating my path ahead. But then, just as I was about to catch a particularly elusive Pikachu, I heard it again, the rustling, followed by a low, almost mocking laugh. My heart dropped. I spun around, scanning the darkness, but I didn't see anything. Just the tree swaying in the wind. I felt a chill run down my spine, and I quickly pocketed my phone, deciding it was time to leave. It just wasn't worth it. As I turned to head back, I caught a glimpse of movement out of the corner of my eye. There it was again, that figure, standing just beyond the tree line, watching me. My breath quickened, and I felt a surge of panic. I started to walk faster, but the figure stepped forward, revealing a silhouette that was both familiar and terrifying. It was a person, but their features were obscured by the shadows. Hey, you're not supposed to be here alone, they called out, their voice echoing eerily in the stillness of the night. I didn't respond, I just kept walking, my heart racing. I could hear footsteps behind me quickening as I picked up my pace. I glanced back and the figure was even closer now, their face still hidden, but I could see the glint of something in their hand, a phone perhaps, or maybe something sinister. I broke into a run, adrenaline coursing through my veins. I could hear the figure laughing behind me, a sound that sent chills down my spine. I sprinted toward my car, fumbling for my keys as I reached the driver's side. I jumped in, locked the doors, and started the engine. My hands were shaking. Just as I was about to pull away, I noticed something on my phone screen. A notification popped up. New Pokemon nearby. I glanced at the screen, and my heart sank. The map showed a cluster of Pokemon right where I had just been standing. I looked up, and the figure was gone, swallowed by the darkness as if they had never been there at all. I hesitated, torn between the thrill of the game and the fear of the unknown figure. I could still feel the weight of their gaze, the echo of their laughter lingering in the air. I decided to leave, my instinct screaming at me to get out of the park. I drove home. 
The streets felt more like a labyrinth than my familiar route. The shadows seemed to stretch and twist, and every flick of the light made me jump. I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being followed, even in the safety of my car. The next few nights, I stayed away from the park. I tried to distract myself with other activities, but the game kept calling me back. I missed the thrill of the hunt, and the best Pokemon are in that park. Eventually, I convinced myself maybe I had overreacted. It's probably somebody just playing a prank, right? And that excitement of catching rare Pokemon, I just couldn't shake it. So one night, I returned. The park was quiet, the moon casting a silvery glow over the path. I felt a mix of excitement and dread as I stepped out of my car. I pulled my phone, ready to dive back into the game. As I walked, I felt the sense of the knees creeping back in. But I pushed it aside. It was just my nerves overreacting to someone playing a prank on me last time. I was here to catch Pokemon, and not let fear control me. But as I wandered deeper into the park, the familiar rustling returned. This time it was louder, more insistent. I stopped, my heart racing, and I turned to face the sound. There was nothing there but trees. But I took a deep breath trying to calm myself, and then I heard it, a whisper, soft and chilling. You shouldn't have come back. I spun around, my pulse quickening. The figure was there again, standing just beyond the trees. Their face was still obscured. I could feel the panic rising in my chest. Who are you? I shouted, my voice trembling. I stepped closer and I could finally see the features illuminated by the moonlight. It was a woman, her eyes wide and unsettlingly calm. You're playing a dangerous game, she said, her voice low and melodic. You think you're alone, but you're never truly alone in the dark. I took a step back, my instincts screaming at me to run. But before I could react, she raised her hand, revealing a phone with the game open. I know what you're after, she said, her gaze piercing through me, but some things are better left undiscovered. Confusion washed over me. What do you mean, I asked, my voice barely above a whisper. She stepped closer, the shadows dancing around her. This game, it's not just a game. It draws in those who seek adventure, but it also attracts something else. Something that feeds on your fear and curiosity. I felt you chill run down my spine. What are you talking about? The Pokemon you chase? The ones you think are just pixels on a screen? They're connected to this place. They're not just creatures. They're echoes of the past, remnants of those who got lost here. Just like you almost did. My heart raced as I processed her words. Lost? What do you mean? She gestured to the trees surrounding us. Many have come here, lured by the thrill of the hunt, but not all have returned. The park holds secrets, and it's hungry for more. Suddenly, the air grew heavy, and I could feel a presence closing in around us. The laughter I'd heard before echoed in the distance, sending a wave of panic through me. I need to go. Listen to me, she urged, her voice rising above the growing noise. If you leave now, you must promise never to return. The game will always be there, but the darkness here is real. It will follow you. I hesitated, torn between the thrill of the game and the warning in her eyes. But as the laughter grew louder, I knew I had made a choice. I promise, I said in a voice stating, I won't come back. With that, I turned and ran, the path illuminated by the moonlight guiding me back to my car. I could feel the weight of the park behind me, the shadows reaching out as if trying to pull me back. But I didn't look back. I jumped in my car, locked the doors, and drove away, the laughter fading into the distance. As I reached the safety of the streets, I glanced at my phone. The game was still open, but I quickly closed it, my heart still racing. I felt a sense of relief wash over me, but it was mixed with the unsettling feeling that I couldn't shake. The woman's warning echo in my head, I knew I had nearly escaped something far more sinister than I'd ever imagined. Days turned into weeks, and I tried to return my normal life. I focused on work, spent time with friends, and even picked up new hobbies. But the allure of the game lingered in the back of my mind. A siren call that I fought to ignore. I deleted the app from my phone, hoping that would sever the connection. One night, as I lay in bed, I heard a soft tapping at my window. My heart raced as I sat up, the darkness in my room feeling suffocating. I crept to the window and peeked through the curtains. Nothing. Just the quiet street outside. I shook my head, convincing myself it was just my imagination. But the tapping continued. More insistent this time. I opened the window slightly, and a gust of wind rushed in, carrying with it a whisper that sent chills down my spine. You can't escape the game. I slammed the window shut, my breath quickening. I knew I had to confront this once and for all. I grabbed my phone, opened the app, my hands trembling. When the screen flickered and I was drawn into that familiar interface, but something was different. The map showed a new location. One I'd never seen before, deep within the park. Against my better judgment, I felt compelled to go back. I drove to the park, the night air thick with tension. As I stepped out of my car, the familiar wrestling surrounded me. This time, I was determined to face whatever awaited me. 
I followed the map, my heart pounding in my chest. The deeper I went, the more the atmosphere shifted. The laughter echoed again, but it was different now. Much more sinister, more mocking. I reached the clearing, and in the center stood a woman, the same one from before. Her expression, unreadable. You came back, she said, her voice a mix of surprise and resignation. I warned you. I had to know, I replied, my voice steady, despite the fear coursing through me. What is this place? What do, what do you want from me? She stepped closer, her eyes glinting in the moonlight. It's not about what I want from you. It's about what you want from yourself. As the words sink in, I felt a wave of realization wash over me. This wasn't just a game. It was a reflection of my own struggles, my yearning for excitement, and the darkness I tried to ignore. I didn't come here to be trapped, I said, my voice firm. I want to break free from this. She nodded slowly, a hint of understanding in her eyes. Then you must face the final challenge. Only by confronting your fears can you truly escape. The laughter grew louder, sw louder, swirling around us like a storm. I took a deep breath, stealing myself for whatever lay ahead. What do I need to do? Embrace the darkness, she replied, stepping back. Only then can you find the light. With that, the shadows around me began to shift and morph, taking on forms that represented my deepest insecurities. I felt the weight of doubt, fear, and failure, the pressure to conform pressing down on me. But instead of running, I stood my ground. I am not afraid, I shouted, my voice echoing through the clearing. I will not let you control me. As I spoke those words, the shadows began to dissipate. The laughter faded into silence. The woman watched, a faint smile on her lips. You've chosen your path. With a final surge of determination, I turned away from the darkness and walked towards the light that began to break through the trees. The park transformed around me, the oppressive atmosphere lifting. As I stepped into the clearing, bathed in moonlight, I felt a sense of freedom wash over me. And as I looked back, the woman was gone, leaving only the whisper of the wind behind. I had faced my fears and emerged stronger, ready to embrace whatever came next. As I drove away from the park, I knew I had left the game behind for good. The adventure I sought was not in chasing pixels, but in living my life fully, free from the shadows of doubt. And with that thought, I smiled, ready to write my own story. Lily, dearest, thank you so much for reading that wonderful story. You didn't have to, but you did, and I appreciate you. If you guys enjoyed this video, tell us what you would have done differently if you were in this situation. Make sure to check out our last creepypasta because it is a PokeTuber's worst nightmare. And while you're at it, be sure to go and check out Lil's channel. It's in the description below. She doesn't do Pokemon content, but she does Sims content, and it's pretty top-notch. With that said, we'll catch you in the next one, and goodbye.